Episode 6 of Season 2 of Invincible falls into the same trap as the last episode. I just don't care. We're straying away from the old formula of what happens when a kid realises that he's a superhero and more into the mundane day-to-day -day of fighting the villain of the week. And without knowing the limits of their powers, it feels like they could just pull anything out of their behinds at any time. It kind of takes all the tension out of these battles. Like, look at what happened in the aftermath of the Lizard League fight from last week. I bet no one saw that coming. Is anyone satisfied with that outcome? If you want real satisfying events and sensible outcomes, go watch Shogun. It's way better than Invincible. It's even way better than what Invincible used to be. This episode has a whole lot of interpersonal drama, and to say I couldn't care less would be an understatement. I just want them to tie up all these personal issues so we can get back to the main plotline of the Viltrumite threat and less on the moping and crying. This episode is sadly even worse than episode 5. Speaking of, I'm giving this a 5 out of 10. I don't even look forward to Thursday night when Invincible releases around these parts anymore. I mean, I didn't watch episode 6 until Saturday morning. That's how little investment I have in it. Whereas Shogun, I'm watching it Tuesday afternoon, as soon as it comes out. I've even booked the next five Wednesdays off because I like to stay up and watch Shogun episodes three times over. There's just so much going on. This season of Invincible feels like they're dragging it out so they can end the season on another massive cliffhanger. Anyway, let's get into the recap and spoilers before I lose all interest. Well, they finally did it. King Lizard finally blew Rex's brains out. Took him long enough. To say I was underwhelmed is an understatement. Does anyone even care about Rex? Did he have the heart to heart with Eve last episode just to build some form of empathy towards him? So now the Lizard League are back and able to get the government to heed their demands. The Sequids are still refusing to attack Rudy and Eve now that they are completely helpless. So Rudy finishes the device, there's no tension in this scene at all, I'm watching this completely stony faced. They get the sequins to detach from Russ and they turn around to find Rudy and Eve overtaken by the sequins, but that's solved inside of 10 seconds. This I think is where I just stopped caring entirely. Rex has had his brains blown out and King Lizard is on the phone to the government. Rex starts moaning and King Lizard, instead of putting another bullet in him, monologues about how brave he is. While Rex gets up, hole in his head spurting blood, handless wrist spurting blood, and pummels King Lizard until his face is mush. So stupid. Ray also manages to squeeze her way out of the big lad's body. If nothing has any consequences anymore, why bother watching? Invincible destroys the Martian fighters that are chasing them, but for some reason, he does each ship in a slightly different way, like he's showing off. And again, we get to listen to more terrible music, heightened by the fact that the lyrics are included in the subtitles. They set up this antagonism between Immortal and Invincible again in this episode, and a minute later it's all over. Now that the team is back from outer space, they have to deal with the fallout of the battle with the Lizard League. Kate's dead, so Immortal has to mourn. Again, why doesn't she have a copy in a safe place? Ray's all busted up, and I didn't even recognize Rex on the operating table. But at least we get terrible music again. Again with the subtitles on the screen. These lyrics are terrible. So the baby's name is now Oliver, and he and I are of a kindred mind. Because a lot of this episode makes me say, bruh, bruh. Good to see he's got a space jumpsuit on. Can't have an alien baby in a regular old Earth jumpsuit. Poor old immortal. He's shattered. Maybe it's because this time you thought she might live longer than the rest. Or it's all just a front and she's safe and sound somewhere. Mark and Amber go to the world's most empty cafe on the world's emptiest street and have a very awkward conversation. I think it's time to just end it. But does the race swapping of Amber make the transition to Eve a little more awkward? I mean, clearly the show is setting these two up. They've hugged three times now. Who the hell is Rick? It's been so long without any mention of him. Thanks, Donald. I never would have remembered Mark's roommate's name is William if you hadn't have mentioned it. 
Rex is remorseful for the way he's treated women. Could we have a love triangle between Mark, Rex and Eve? That's what I tune into Invincible for. But Rex is into reading home decorating magazines, so maybe he would be a better fit for Mark's roommate William. Once his boyfriend inevitably loses his mind due to being turned into a robot because he was talking before about how he decorated Rick's room. Why do I get the feeling Rex will be back to 100% fitness by next episode? Zero consequences. They even said he was getting a new hand. Debbie's interviewing babysitters and she's totally onto Mrs. Featherbottom. She stands out so much she's practically glowing. Ugh. I hate it how this episode does the whole two people finishing each other's sentences in two different conversations thing. It's cliched and it doesn't work. Nolan wrote books about beings from other planets that could help win the war against the Viltrumites. It was about this time that I found myself checking the weather or sending text messages rather than paying attention because it's also boring. Immortal goes to fight Alan in orbit and Invincible shows up out of nowhere to stop them. There's this terrible joke they keep making about douchebags and whether we have them on Earth. I'm pretty sure they're referring to jerks and not the actual namesake of the term because that would be weird. Amber's at some party and they're really scraping the bottom of the barrel here with the music selection. I'm a rapper so I cut it up like a lunchable. The voice of a generation. We get the cliche, sending a text and having the text appear on screenshot. All it did was make me want to check my own messages. Alan wants Mark to come see Thetis, but he can't leave now. So Alan scans the books for info on how to deal with the Viltrumites. Mr. Craigs is taking time out of his busy day to explain to Nolan how they need to heal people up before executing them. Seems like a lot of sheer hubris. But he offers Nolan a way out. Russ is cleaning up his apartment after the shapesmith left it in a pig's die. He coughs up a sequid and now he's under their control again. As if they wouldn't detect that. Come on now. Post credit scene and Angstrom Levy is back on Earth. Maybe next episode we'll actually get some stakes. Some real action with real consequences. Because this episode was a real snooze fest. Garbage relationship troubles, recruiting a babysitter, reading books, aziz, 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 aziz. This episode of Invincible is sadly a 5 out of 10. Nothing grabbed my attention. It felt like the entire episode was building up to a couple of events that are entirely in the future, nothing right now. I can't believe how little consequences anything has. Rex seems perfectly fine, Ray is on the mend, and I'll bet you cold hard cash that Duplicate has a zero copy hidden away somewhere. I also struggle to accept that they didn't find the hidden sequid on Russ Livingston. Come on guys. I'm optimistic the next week's episode will be better, but this ain't it. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie, thanks for your time, and have a good one.